Hey guys, I do this Kept Tech here bring you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Um, happy Saturday. And as always, today I want to go over interview questions or questions you'll be asked when you go on a job interview. And these questions were given to me, obviously, if someone gets a job or something like that, I'm like, I'm like yo, bro, or gal, whoever, hit, hook me up with the interview questions so I can make a response video to that. And I try to answer it to the best of my ability. So, um... One of my colleagues, he, he started his job uh, literally on May 4th of this Monday, and um, he's super happy with his job, he likes his job, he, he, he's using the, some of the apps that I've gotten over on, on YouTube, he's been using them, so like Baumgart, um, using the ticketing system, um, um, uh, i never gone over Avaya, but he's using Avaya in his company, and he's learning a lot, some SLA service level agreement, stuff that you can't do in the job, you know, some HR compliance stuff here and there, so it's really interesting, it's good, it's good stuff, and he's enjoying his job so far, he told me, thank you Kevin, I owe you a beer, whatever, I'm like, ah, that's fine, we're gonna send me more interview questions, so, he helped me help with interview questions, so let's go over them, so this is part three, of interview questions let's do this all right so if you're new to my channel I do IT videos IT support videos I do com TA videos to talk about how to get into desktop support tech support I do job interviews as well where I interview people that are in in the IT field um, some some people from from re job recruiters and stuff like that I do hands-on training as well where I go live trainings on Saturday with a bunch of people join my channel and we do live training and we ask questions we go over resumes we do a bunch of career stuff so as always, rate, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, that way you know when I go live. As always, I'm here to help. Um, I get busy here and there, but I'm trying to help you as much as I can, alright? So let's get right into this. And, I, and obviously, I'm going to tell you the questions, and I'm going to show you how I answer it. Obviously, the, I answer it the best of my ability. You know, I'm, I don't know everything. Nobody knows everything, so let's get right into this. So, question number one. How do you backdoor into a computer? So you could do it two ways. You could press F8. Um, so basically you turn the computer off, turn it back on, you press F8 and you go into the CMD and you run CMD commands. Um, my method is using um, the hiring boot CD. So if you ever watched my other video, I have a video on how I hacked into 7, 8 and Windows 10. And basically I use hiring boot CD as a backdoor program. I, I created a bootable flash drive. You could do that on hiring boot CD and then you could go into the operating system and you could change the password of the computer so sometimes people forget their passwords and you can't log into the computer and you don't know what your admin password is so you have to do a backdoor so basically you run a, a software or a program and then you get into the computer and then basically change the password that would be the only method of doing it I mean obviously if you don't CMD you could do it that way too but what if um, what if you don't know the username or password on that computer and then you cannot even get into CMD so you you know you have to have that, that software or that program so that's the one method you would do you would use you get into um, you run Hiram Boot CD you get into SAM which is a, a C program C system 32 file and you could manipulate that and change that and then you could change the password on that user on that computer Windows 7 Windows 10 whatever so that's, that's, it. that's how I answer question number one question number two how do you create a new Outlook profile uh, there are two methods to doing this. I'm going to go over method number one. Basically, go to the bottom left hand side. You go into the start menu. You type control panel. You hit control panel. You change the, the organize by small icons. And then basically, you scroll down to hit mail. You click on mail. And then there's a, thing, there's a tab called profile. You click on profile. Hit new profile. And then you put the name of the profile. Usually, I typically I put the name of I put the name of default profile, or you put the name of the the profile of the user. His name is Tom, for example. I will put Tom pro Tom space profile. I hit OK, 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 and then it'll start create. It'll start connecting to the server. It'll start adding this. It'll start writing his information, his email address, and everything. You hit next, 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 and you hit finish. And then you open up Outlook, and then when you open up Outlook, it would say opening up at 30%, 60%, 100%, and you start seeing all the add-ins that come with Outlook, and it opens up right away. That's uh, method number one, and then method number two is basically you go into um, your C user, C user, uh, C user person, so like it's Tom, so you go to C, C drive, you go to, you go to C explorer, you go to the C drive, you go to users, you go into Tom, you look for Tom, then you hit the slash, you go app data, you go into app data because it's a hidden file, you go into app data, then you go into local, slash, slash local, then you go into um, Outlook. So basically it's Microsoft Outlook, and then you go into your user profile, you delete the profile. The profile might not let you delete it. If you have an add-in like Skype, for example, you might have to close out of Skype first, exit out of Skype, and then try deleting the Outlook profile. Obviously, you cannot delete it if you have Outlook open as well. So basically, you have to close out of Outlook, you delete it, and it will create a brand new OSC profile on that computer. Simple as that. All right. Question number three. Are you familiar with MSTRC 
and MSRA in Bungar. So MSTRC is a program, the Remote Desktop Protocol 3389. It's a program that basically has it on every computer on Windows 10, unless it's disabled by group policy. I, I wouldn't know why you would disable that. But you, you know, you, you, some people are not tech savvy, they're not gonna be using that. But some people that are SQL developers, they might be using it. So basically you open a Remote Desktop Protocol, you open up a Remote Desktop app, and basically you put the name of the computer name or the IP address and you're able to connect to that computer. That'd be one method of connecting to a computer. Um, the other method is MSRA. MSRA is a remote desktop tool that comes with Windows 10 and it allows you to share your screen with another user or another person. Basically you could do remote desktop protocol that way. Um, it's, it's a remote desktop share screen app that comes with the computer. You could do that. Obviously if you're doing that you have to enable remote desktop on the computer through system properties. If you don't have that enabled it's not going to work. So, um, BombGuard, I got over BombGuard before. It's a remote desktop application so you could, you could basically either email the user a link or you could send them to a link and then you give them a session key and then you do a remote desktop with them. They have to download the client and then when they download the client it would say starting a user starting a, a screen share session with Kay Apolinario, whatever my name is, and then you hit yes, and then it downloads the client to their computer, that software to that computer, and then you're able to do a screen share. That's what BombGuard is. So, obviously there are other applications you could use besides BombGuard, but that, that this company specifically uses BombGuard, so that, that's how I would answer that question. How do you map a share drive? How do you map a share drive? You go into C Explorer on the computer, so the yellow folder on the bottom on the computer might be there. If it's not there, you just type C, the little dot, the quote dots, the quotation dots, and then you go into C Explorer. Um, you go into um, this PC, you right click on it, you hit properties, you hit map the network drive, you call the, the letter you want, you put Z, R, L, whatever, whatever you want, Z, H, L, whatever. You put the map drive right there and you put reconnect on next login, always reconnect on next login, or you have the other option which says reconnect with a different account and you hit finish and then that letter should show up on C on the C drive you see underneath the C drive you see a network folder and it should say like the letter L or the letter K or T whatever with the share path directory and that's how you will map the share drive if that makes sense all right how do you publish a certificate to the gal so you go into and um, this is something I normally do not do uh, my company does not do this but some people some companies might do this so you go into your outlook you open up outlook um, once you open up Outlook, you go to File, you hit the drop down, you hit Options, um, and when you hit Options, there's this thing called Trust Center. So you go into Trust Center, and then when you go to Trust Center, there's a, there's a, under Trust Center, there's something called Mail, the Mail, the Mail, and Trust Center. You hit the Mail, and then if you Mail, there's a tab called Publish to Gal, or Publish This to Gal. And I'll put it on this video so you can see the screenshot where I'm talking about and how it looks, but I'll put it on this video and you'll see what I'm talking about. But it's there. You can actually you can actually publish to Gal. It's a button called Publish to Gal with certificate. And I'll show you a screen that I'll show you I'll put it here somewhere, you'll see what I'm talking about. Alright. Um what information do you look for if a user's experience issues logging in? Um when was the last um did they change their password recently? Um I go into Active Directory, is their account locked out? Um are users having issues logging in? Are they on the network? Are they on the internet? Are they using VPN? It'd be a lot, you know, depends where they are. Like if they're in the office and they're and they can't they can't log in, it's because their computer's locked out. Maybe they changed their password, or maybe they're having connectivity issues on that computer, maybe it's not on the domain. It could be a lot of different reasons, but I would check that first. So if it, I need to know if they're on, on a laptop with VPN at home, or if they're using a desktop in the office. Or they're remoting into their computer with Citrix on, you know, in from the house to the office. So it depends on the scenario. So obviously, the first thing I would ask if the user cannot cannot log in or having they're having login issues, uh, I would say that if you change, have you changed your password recently? No, like, yeah, I have. And then I go check their account. I would like to see if their account has been locked out for some weird reason. Maybe it's been locked out. I don't know why it would be locked out. Maybe it got locked out for some reason because maybe he changed his password, or she changed her password, or. Maybe they're locked out because they forgot to change the password on their phone. They changed it on their computer, but not on their phone. And it could be a lot of different reasons. But first thing I want to do is I want to know is when does the last time it worked? And I want to go on AD and see if they're locked out of their account. Those are the two things I would ask. You know, um, ask myself is go on AD and then ask them if when's the last time it worked. So and if they changed their password recently. Hopefully that answers your question. All right. Uh, take me through the troubleshooting process for applications, account related connectivity problems. So, if they're having an issue with an application, I don't know what kind of application it is. It could be Excel, Word, PowerPoint. I want to know, uh, first thing I want to know is if, if it's only them that's being affected by it. 
So like for example, if someone has an Excel file and the file, every time they open an Excel file and it keeps crashing, I want to know if everyone else on the team could open that file. If they, everyone else on the team could open that file and he or she cannot open that file, that means that, that Excel that, that they have on their computer, something has happened on their computer. So maybe they had a Windows update, maybe they have a new add-in, maybe there's something going on with that file on their computer, we don't know. So it might be something like that. So you want to narrow it down to the individual person or individual client first before you assume that everyone's being affected by it. So basically you process of elimination if you know that like, that's just excel another issue is like a printer so if you know it, if everyone else could print on a printer and it's just this one user having that issue then you know that's just that one computer having that issue then you probably have to remove and re-add the printer or do some other stuff to fix it so that's my my train thought process i want to know if everyone's being affected by it or it's just one person being affected by it if it's one person being affected by it, then you could narrow it down to that one person. And then you could ask them a series of questions like, have you, have you done a Windows update? When was the last time this worked? Have you restarted your computer recently? Maybe the computer's been on for 60 days or 80 days. Maybe it's pending Windows updates. Maybe they're missing a file or a program for this program to work. You know, it could be a bunch of different things. But that's how I would, that's how I would narrow it down. I do process of elimination and make sure that it's just them being affected by it. Not everyone, just them, if that makes sense. All right. Are you comfortable with, question number eight, are you comfortable with using the registry to fix this? Yeah, of course I am. If I have to fix something on the registry, I will fix it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I've done registry reg edit changes before um, for uh, Bloomberg. So Bloomberg is an app that basically you have to, you could create a new user profile on Bloomberg if you go into the registry settings, and I know how to do that. Um, but you, I don't usually touch registry, but if I have to fix something, then I would touch with the registry. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, question number nine, last question. CMD is disabled on most of the computers we work with. If you have to install something via command prompt, how would you do it? So, this question is very interesting because this question you don't see it a lot like in some environments. I, I had to do the command line in my other job, by the way. Um, why? Because CMD was disabled for some people. So, you open up CMD, you run a CMD as admin. Um, most computers will work. How do you install something with a command prompt? How do you install something in the command prompt? So you open up CMD. Um, when you open up CMD, you do CD. And, I, and, and as I'm talking about it, you'll see me literally do it on this on this screen. I'll put it somewhere here. So you do C, CD. You do CD because you have to tell it where to go. So you do CD, you do space. And then you do C, the C, the letter C, the two dots, slash users, slash the name of your, whatever your name is, your computer. Mine is called main user or whatever. So slash... So you do cd dot slash users slash the main user slash download. So you go into downloads slash um, if it's a Slack. So you do Slack setup dot exe and you press enter and then it'll start installing the program on that computer. That would be the way to do it. So basically you 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 tell it where to go. So you do cd space the c you see the two dots the two dots and then slash the name whatever and then in the path there. It could be downloads. It could be desktop. Wherever you put the file located at it'll be that location and then you just run the file and then you hit enter or okay that'll be the only way to do it there'll be no other way to do it you can run it as admin and then you open up cmd and you just tell it where to go you do cd you do cd space and you, you do c dot users whatever dot users slash the name of the person's computer p tom whatever i don't know what his name is slash downloads and then slash the name of the file it could be uh it could be slack setup.exe Discord setup dot exe black uh, chrome dot exe whatever and then you press enter and then it'll start installing that program Anyway, I hope that answers all your questions. So this is interview questions number three as always rate comment subscribe Give me a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. I should be live later today So just follow me along. We're gonna do some training today. Should be fun. Hopefully somebody learns something Hopefully I learned something. Hopefully everyone learns something. There's always something new to learn always something Always something interesting to learn everyone. I learn something new every day as always, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope this helps somebody out in the IT industry trying to do a job into you, all right? Anyway, you guys have a great day, all right? Take care, peace, and have a great Saturday. Take care, bye.